Chapter 41, Blacksmith Ranking Test, with narrowed eyes, Ken Yue picked up Tang Wuling's form, follow me. He had to see for himself what level Mangtian's disciple had attained. The so-called testing room was actually just a forging room. Naturally, a blacksmithing test needed to be conducted in a room such as this. As soon as he entered the forging room, Tang Wuling's nervousness eased a bit. The forging room was about the same as Mangtian's. This was the first time since he arrived he found himself within a familiar environment. The surveyor was a middle-aged woman who evidently knew Kenyue. Grandmaster Kenyue, you've personally brought someone to take the test. I just heard that this child is only nine years old. If he was just a bit younger, he would be able to attack the president's record. Kenyue said, We can talk after the test. The surveyor nodded and looked towards Tang Wuling. There are fifteen kinds of metal here. Pick one of them to purify. I will grade you based on the metal you choose and the degree of purification. If your score surpasses sixty, then you'll end the title of a rank one blacksmith. Yes. Tang Wuling nodded, then looked towards the medals arranged on the stand. Fifteen different medals, each and every one of them was one third of a meter squared. The medals had all sorts of colors and qualities. Although the blacksmith testing symbol is one only needed to purify a medal, it actually examines more than one's purification abilities. The surveyor didn't tell him what these medals were, indicating that he needed to identify and understand each of the medals himself while picking the one best suited to his abilities. The medals' qualities and purification results were tied together, meaning the purification score would be affected by the chosen medal. Tang Wuling swept his gaze over them and instantly recognized what he had to work with. After some pondering, he picked a medal from the middle of the shelf. The chunk of metal twinkled with a faint silver light. When they saw him pick this medal, Ken Yue and the surveyor both revealed a trace of shock in their expressions. They never expected Tang Wuling to choose such a thick and heavy medal. I choose this chunk of heavy silver. Tang Wuling picked up the heavy silver and then placed it on the forging table without making the slightest sound. Mang Tian's demands of him had been very high. He forbade him from allowing the sound of metal colliding with metal to sound out unless he was forging. This chunk of heavy silver with dimensions of one third meter squared actually weighed over 300 kilograms. It was extraordinarily heavy. However, Ken Yue saw Tang Wuling pick it up with no effort at all. Little guy, your strength truly isn't small. The surveyor exclaimed in astonishment. She was slowly thinking that the nine-year-old boy in front of her could actually pass the blacksmith's test. Tang Wuling said, Masters, may I begin now? The surveyor said, you may begin. You have one hour to finish. Purify it as much as you can. The degree of its purification will determine your score. Yes. Tang Wuling didn't have any needless thoughts and began to work skillfully. He immediately set to work by starting up the forging table and increased its temperature. After this, he put the heavy silver inside and began calcining it. The time required to calcine the metal was also counted in the time he had to purify it. The blacksmith's test didn't have any tricks to it. The association had strict requirements for all of their blacksmiths, as they worked directly reflected upon their reputation. Tang Wuling took in deep breaths and stretched while he adjusted the soul power within his body. The reason he chose heavy silver wasn't because he wanted to show off to his peers; rather, it was the last metal he had forged with. After his initial forging of it, he had gained a thorough understanding of its characteristics. Furthermore, the chunk he picked was also very similar to the one he had forged with originally. It was like seeing someone else hunting and being excited by one's memories of the thrill of the hunt. And so, before he knew it, he had chosen it. However, he still remembered Mangtian's words: "He mustn't use his thousand refined heavy silver hammer." unless he was alone. At the very least, he couldn't reveal his thousand refined heavy silver hands until he was 15 years old. Tang Wuling gradually adjusted his breathing as he watched the metal's temperature on the forging table and sharpened his gaze. Ken Yue stood to the side motionlessly as he watched Tang Wuling. When he saw Tang Wuling's gaze sharpen, he couldn't help but secretly exclaim in his heart, Oh, Mang Tian, Mang Tian, you've truly picked up a gem. Ken Yue was the greatest advocate of single-minded devotion to forging within the blacksmith community. He wasn't particularly talented, it was just that he liked the profession. He had gotten to where he was now by proceeding one firm step at a time, whilst relying solely on his love and devotion to forging. In the end, he gained the acknowledgement of the blacksmithing world. Tang Wuling was just a nine-year-old child. A nine-year-old child was actually able to achieve such a state of concentration. This meant that he truly understood the meaning of forging. When faced with such a child, Ken Yue's expression immediately brightened. Tang Wuling's left hand quickly pressed the button, bringing it out of the forging table at just the right temperature. Hastily, the surveyor began writing this down. As the surveyor of the blacksmith's ranking test, she was extremely experienced in her role. From Tang Wuling's details, she could determine that this wasn't the child's first time forging heavy silver. How could a blacksmith who hadn't even registered yet truly forge heavy silver? Tang Wuling began. His two arms shook a bit as a pair of thousand refined tungsten hammers appeared in his hands. He dexterously lifted up his left arm and tapped the heavy silver twice, issuing a ding-ding sound. Ken Yue's gaze switched to Tang Wuling's ears. He clearly saw Tang Wuling's ears tremble slightly. He's listening. He's listening to the feedback of the metal. What an excellent lad. Right at that moment, Tang Wuling's right arm hammered down with lightning speed. The whole forging room was filled with a whistling sound, and in the next instant, the tungsten hammer heavily landed on the chunk of heavy silver. Peng. The tungsten hammer sang a note as the heavy silver depressed inwards a bit. Tang Wuling's pair of large, pretty eyes began shining at that moment as the hammer in his left hand quickly followed. Peng. Another boom resounded in the room. The two booms echoed within the room while Ken Yue's eyes widened a bit. Those are Thousand Refined Tungsten Hammers, Chapter 42, Eight Star Saint Craftsman. How old was this child? Yet yeah, he was unexpectedly able to use such heavy thousand refined tungsten hammers. It was known that some of the ranked two blacksmiths couldn't even use a single hammer weighing 40 kilograms, let alone a pair of thousand refined tungsten hammers that weighed 40 kilograms each. Forging required physical strength, stamina, and technique. Strength was the foundation which increased the efficacy of one's hammering. However, one's strength would also be consumed quickly. Without a thought, Tang Wuling's arms were already in motion, readying the next strike. His two hammers descended. From the heavy silver's feedback, Tang Wuling could tell that this chunk of heavy silver was very similar to the one he had forged previously. Even its inner vein lines were similar. This familiar feeling completely filled his mind as his two hammers moved into action, hammering down on the middle like a rain squall. Bang, 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 bang. Bang. Bang bang bang. The sound of hammering was both intense and rhythmic, a combination which gave off an extraordinary sense of beauty. Everything he had encountered since arriving in Easty City had been strange and unfamiliar. This made him feel pressured as well as nervous. After all, he was still just a nine-year-old child. When he finally arrived at the academy, Tang Wu had to deal with bullying and was later fined as punishment for dealing with it. All of this made him feel as if he couldn't even breathe. However, before him now was a familiar chunk of heavy silver on a forging station. With the addition of the familiar rhythm of forging, he couldn't help but feel at home. As his eyes focused on the heavy silver before him, his ears twitched unceasingly, carefully listening to the feedback from his strikes. Under the pounding of his hammers, the heavy silver began to change. However, if one listened carefully, one would discover that as time passed the sound from the pair of thousand refined tungsten hammers hitting the heavy silver became more and more stirring. The surveyor and Ken Yue's expressions grew serious. Tang Wuling was completely focused at this moment, even compared to other blacksmiths already in their twenties and thirties, his level of focus was near impossible to match. A genius. This child is a genius. This thought simultaneously appeared in both their minds. Ken Yue didn't even need to look at the heavy silver. With his experience, he already knew how effective Tang Wuling's purification of the heavy silver would be. Purifying heavy silver was originally a second rank blacksmith standard due to the excessive difficulty of purifying a metal as dense as heavy silver. It wasn't easy at all to completely
eight black stars. These eight stars signified a craftsman who had attained the eighth rank within their craft, while the golden hammer represented his position as a blacksmith. An eighth rank blacksmith was an eight star state craftsman level blacksmith. In the whole blacksmiths association, there was only one blacksmith at this level. Beside the middle aged man stood a girl who looked about 13 or 14 years old. She was tall and exceptionally pretty with a pair of large, bright eyes. Her golden hair was combed and put into a ponytail while she wore skin tight clothes, which made her seem very nimble. When they saw him arrive, the staff members at the front desk immediately stood up and greeted him. President. The middle aged man nodded and said, At ease, I'm just bringing you to take the second rank test. I'd like to speak with the surveyor. This was the eight star state craftsman as well as the president of the Sunmoon Federation's East City branch of the Blacksmiths Association. This was Mu Chen. Yes, please wait a moment, President. Miss Musai is already taking the second rank test. She's truly worthy of being a generational genius in the blacksmithing world. Musai's expression was undisturbed in the face of such praise. In response, she just nodded in greeting. She didn't like being called a genius. The reason she was where she was today wasn't because of her talent, but because of her efforts. Her goal was to surpass her father and become a ninth-ranked divine craftsman. Throughout the Dolo continent, there were only three nine-star divine craftsmen. Ah, uh, what's that sound? Mu Chen raised an eyebrow as his eyes displayed a trace of astonishment. Beside him, Yuzai had also raised an eyebrow as her elegant little ears trembled slightly in concentration. She immediately caught onto the sound of successive melodious, yet intense, pounding spilling the air. Regardless of whether it were the rhythm or the frequency, the sound of pounding was completely beautiful. It gave people a feeling of happiness. Mu Chen asked the staff member, Has someone come to take the fourth rank blacksmith's test? The staff member replied dumbfoundedly, No. Mu Chen pondered on it for a moment before turning to Yuzai at his side, Head to the testing room and prepare first. I'm going to go take a look. N. Although Musai was also curious, she still obeyed and immediately headed to the second rank testing room. She couldn't be distracted at a time like this. After separating from his daughter, Mu Chen followed the sounds of forging and quickly arrived at room number three. This forging room had exceptional soundproofing abilities, yet, sound would still escape through the door. This type of forging sound could only come from forging an uncommon, high density metal. Moreover, every strike didn't create any noise, signifying how accurate these strikes were. Thus, those intensive and powerful collisions meant that the blacksmith was using thousand refined hammers. Blacksmith ranks were very strict, with ranks directly relating to their level of achievements. If one was able to reach this level of forging, then they ought to be at the level of a grandmaster. Moreover, Yu Chen could also hear the results. As this blacksmith forged the metal, they were already in a state of harmony with it. Chapter 43, second rank. Harmonizing was when the blacksmith builds on a resonance with the piece of metal he was crafting, until it reaches a state of fusion between both. It was in this state that the chance of producing an excellent product became higher. Every single work of forging contained both the blacksmith's feelings as well as their ideals. Mu Chen didn't enter the forging chamber because he couldn't. Even as the president, nobody was allowed into the chamber when during a blacksmith's ranking test. Entering might falter the blacksmith's concentration, thus resulting in their failure or even casting a shadow on them. How interesting. Mu Chen once again returned to the front desk and asked the staff, What is the name of the examinee in room 3? The staff, upon his inquiry, checked through the list and answered almost immediately. The examinee's name is Tang Wuling. He was recommended here by Grandmaster Ken Yue. He is currently being tested. As he spoke, he passed Mu Chen a copy of Tang Wuling's forms. When Ken Yue's name was mentioned, he smiled. I say, who else other than someone recommended from old Ken would be able to enter a state of harmonization in the midst of an examination? Ah. Uh, Nine years old? With an expression of disbelief, he turned his eyes towards the staff. Are you sure this isn't a mistake of some sort? This examinee is only nine years old? The staff confirmed immediately. That's right. We had doubts about it previously too. I couldn't believe that a child that young would come for a ranking test. Mu Chen was stupefied. For a child his age, he must be taking the first rank blacksmith's test. Beep beep. Mu Chen removed a sole communicator from his waist belt and entered the call. Daddy, I'm ready. Are you coming? I'm in room six. I'll be there shortly. Though he still had doubts, it didn't matter as much as his daughter. Mu Chen quickened his steps towards room six. Time's up. The surveyor announced in a weird sounding voice. Dang. Tang Wuling finished off his last hammer strike and retracted both his hammers. With a flash of light, his pair of hammers vanished into his heavy silver rings. His chest rose and fell gently. Tang Wuling seemed to be slightly short of breath, his cheeks scarlet with a blush, and sweat was glistening from his forehead. But that was all. The forging room was once again silent, albeit only for a short time. While the surveyor had her attention on the piece of heavy silver, Ken Yue directed his gaze to Tang Wuling's eyes. In Tang Wuling's eyes, Ken Yue thought he caught a hint of a glimmering silverish light that had been emitted from the heavy silver. Though the forging process had ended, Tang Wuling's focus was still in its initial stage. He believed that the child would one day grow up to become a peerless individual should he stay on the path. Heavy silver. Purification exceeding 100 refinements. Volume reduction of 7%. State of purification, 100 refined, 3 times. The surveyor announced precisely after a careful inspection of the piece of metal. If the forging was done by a grandmaster blacksmith, getting the heavy silver to such a state wouldn't mean much. This forging, however, was done by a mere 9-year-old child whose body had not even hit puberty yet. It was an incredible feat from this child. The evaluation has passed. The surveyor announced, her gaze directed towards Ken Yue. Ken Yue broke into a bitter smile. Mang Tian did this on purpose. The surveyor was shocked upon hearing Ken Yue's remarks. This kid, he's a disciple of Mang Tian. Ken Yue nodded his head. I couldn't believe it either, but I now confirm that the kid is eligible for the second rank test. The surveyor considered Ken Yue's comment before turning towards Tang Wuling. Kid, other than metal purification, do you have other skills? It was then that Tang Wuling awakened from his carefree forging state. However, his only faults were hammering too lightly while using the thousand refined tungsten hammers, and the forging process ended a little earlier than he would have liked it too. If sufficient time was given, he was sure he could complete the thousand refinements. I can forge some basic small and medium sized components, Tang Wuling described earnestly. This didn't surprise Ken Yue since Tang Wuling previously mentioned it, and even Mang Tian agreed that Tang Wuling was capable of receiving jobs himself. Please forge a medium sized component, the surveyor said with a deep voice, and if you manage to succeed, you will be promoted to the second rank. The requirements to be a second rank blacksmith was simply to forge a medium sized component and to have the ability to hundred refined rare metals. Tang Wuling's previous purification process was excellent, so he only needed to forge some components now. Yes. Tang Wuling answered before immediately beginning to forge the component. The pair of thousand refined tungsten hammers reappeared, and rhythmic hammering sounded out once again. The surveyor was about to call out and tell Tang Wuling that he could use common metals to pass the test, but was silenced by a glance from Ken Yue. He wanted to see how well a nine year old child could perform this task. As he hammered the chunk of heavy silver again, a surge of happiness filled Tang Wuling's heart. Within his heart, he felt as though he was reunited with his friends. At his endless pounding, the chunk of metal produced a crisp hum, as if in response to his hammering. Tang Wuling's hammering speed gradually increased. Under his hammer's pounding, the metal started to change. With every strike of his hammer, it bounced off the metal even higher. Afterwards, Tang Wuling would add even more force into his next strike. The heavy silver gradually formed into a circular shaped medium component. Under his constant pounding, the hammering process that Ken Yue witnessed was one without any faults, as if every strike had its place and every move was in his eyes, this was the textbook's ideal of forging. This child's foundation skills were unmatched. Even if he were to be compared with 18 or 19 year olds with an apprenticeship of more than 8 years, he would still
Tang Luolin couldn't be more proud with his piece of work. In fact, this was his first time forging a component with heavy silver. When he recalled the past, Tang Luolin thought that the only flaw to his work was that the component was not thousand refined. He was confident that he would have been able to thousand refine it. After his previous thousand refinements, he discovered that his understanding of forging had gone up by a level. After forging heavy silver again, he felt that it was simply wonderful. Chapter 44, aren't you just showing off? When Tang Luolin walked out of the forging room, his face was painted with joy. It wasn't because of the recognition from both masters, nor was it because he had risen up to a second rank blacksmith. Rather, he was euphoric from the sum of 10,000 Federation coins he received from the heavy silver component he had forged. One can actually make such a huge fortune from forging rare metals. Ken Yue had informed him, prior to his exit, to report back again to the blacksmith association in two days' time to receive his blacksmith's badge, and to start receiving jobs from the association. Mang Tian. The call to his old acquaintance finally got through. N. Mang Tian's voice was just as indifferent as the time they last spoke. Where did you find yourself such a treasure? Ken Yue spoke into his device impatiently. Mang Tian replied plainly, What are you talking about? Who else do you think I am referring to? Your nine year old, second rank disciple. What's more shocking, he just forged a component directly with heavy silver. With his young age, he could definitely master the thousand refinements within a few years of serious training. With that, he would be good on his way towards a grandmaster blacksmith. How did you train this child? Hey, can you say something? Ken Yue was not pleased with the lack of response he got from Mang Tian. I have nothing to say. That child was born with innate divine strength and he has a diligent character. That's all. Mang Tian still spoke plainly. Ken Yue snapped back at Mang Tian's explanation. Was your intention to brandish this kid's abilities at me when you recommended him here? Yes. Mang Tian acknowledged his true intention. Speak, what are your conditions for you to give that child to me? Since you will be at the deserted glory bound city most of the time, do you even have time to guide your disciple? He would be better off if you let him come with me. I will guide him carefully if you trust me. I'm hanging up. Da da bastard. Ken Yue almost dropped his soul communicator out of rage. Teacher, were you looking for me? At that very moment, the youngster in his twenties walked into Ken Yue's room. What blacksmith rank are you at? How many years have you been under me? Can't you even complete the thousand refinements? The youngster, while in a state of loss, was unfortunately the target of all of Ken Yue's anger. This master of his was usually known for his good temper. Tang Wolin was, however, clueless of the impact his outstanding ability had on the others, and he was on his way back to the academy. Take it. Tang Wolin pushed forth a bag full of 10,000 Federation coins to Shishi. It was propped up on his bed. The bruise from Tang Wolin's punch had not subsided. Shishi eyed him coldly. Are you trying to run away from the match? Tang Wolin shook his head in reply. I couldn't pay up previously because I did not have any coins. Since I ruined most of the property, I don't think you should be paying for all of it. Here is 10,000 Federation coins. I will pay you back the other 10,000 Federation coins when I have them. I am a man of my words, and since I have accepted your offer, I will be there tomorrow after school. You can set the location. Tang Wolin left a bunch of coins next to Shishi and headed through his bed after stating his intentions. Zhou Sangsi and Yunxiao exchanged a glance as they observed the exchange from the top bunks. Ever since his defeat against Tang Wolin in the steamed bun eating contest, Zhou Sangsi's attitude towards Tang Wolin had changed. Yunxiao, on the other hand, was curious at how Tang Wolin managed to produce the 10,000 Federation coins. It seemed impossible for him to get such huge sum within this short span of time. Tang Wolin entered a meditative state easily after moving into his cross-legged posture on his bed. In fact, today was his first time using his martial soul in battle. He didn't have any experience in these matters, and this was even the first true battle he had been in. Tang Wolin felt that Shishi was a formidable person. If he hadn't used his blue silver soul skill, his skills alone wouldn't stand a chance in withstanding Shishi. From the fight earlier today, he gained some understanding of his own martial soul too. He recalled the advice his teacher had given him and agreed that he truly needed to improve his control over his blue silver grass. Shishi, however, nearly lay down on his bed. His mind was filled with images of the match earlier today as well, specifically on his inability to cut the grass with his light dragon dagger. Is Tang Wolin's martial soul really just blue silver grass? Did I underestimate the ability of Tang Wolin's trash martial soul? I will show him my true colors in the match tomorrow. I will make him pay for that punch. As he thought this, she touched his swollen cheeks, reigniting his heart's fury. Meditation should be done prior to and after dinner. After all, the clumsy bird flies early for the forest. This saying had left a deep impression in Tang Wolin's mind. Dawn. Tang Wolin woke up as soon as the first rays of sunlight poked at him through the windows. A night of meditation did help him recovering some of his soul power. As soon as he entered rank 10, he had felt a distinct difference in the time needed to regain his energy. At the same time, he would need more soul power to advance to the next stages. This required him to use far more time to accumulate the amount. As he got off his bed, his gaze rested unintentionally on the occupant within the lower bunk of the other set of beds across the room. Shishi, who seemed to be meditating, opened his eyes suddenly. Both pairs of eyes looked for a few moments. Shishi's gaze was frosty, whereas Tang Wolin had a look of indifference. Shortly after, Tang Wolin broke his gaze and headed for the shower. In his opinion, Shishi was just another wealthy city kid. He gave off an image of bossiness, assertiveness, and insolence. Tang Wolin would rather make friends with Joe Tangsi than the rich city kid. After finishing his morning shower, there was nothing else to stop him from the most important activity of all. Mealtime However, Tang Wolin was unaware that his previous challenge in steamed bun eating had earned him the nickname of Rice Bucket, even though he hadn't even started his journey in the academy. As he woke up earlier than others, he was greeted with an empty dining hall, within the hall were the same three windows. Breakfast was, like previous meals, categorized into three categories. Tang Wolin naturally headed for the third window, which provided free food. Breakfast was a spread of milk, eggs, sausages, bread, and vegetables. Tang Wolin helped himself and piled up a pyramid's worth of food on his plate before leaving for an empty table at the corner to devour his food. The dining hall's chef recognized Tang Wolin for his record-breaking appetite and was worried that the child's stomach could not take up all the food. But he now knew that the child was doing fine when he caught few of Tang Wolin's actions through the window. She she entered the dining hall just when Tang Wolin started with his meal. Like Tang Wolin, his mind had already been made up and he headed straight to the first window, collecting a plate full of food as well. One would think that the food on Shishi's plate was similar to Tang Wolin's from a mere glance. A closer inspection, however, would make one realize the difference. Take for instance the milk. It was not just any milk, but one that was taken from a soul beast bred in captivity. As with the other food on his plate, they contained a higher amount of nutrients, all from various origins. But if one were to compare the portions of rice consumed between the two, he would realize that Tang Wolin's portion was as much or even more than ten times that of what Shishi had on his plate. Though both of them were seated far apart, each in solitude, Shishi kept glancing occasionally in Tang Wolin's direction. Tang Wolin was, however, concentrated on the breakfast before him. The dining hall grew crowded as students began entering. Just like how it was the night before, they started pointing and directing their comments at Tang Wolin. As the sun rose high, the opening ceremony started. Chapter 45, The Worst Class. The opening ceremony on East the Academy's huge plaza. It was only during the ceremony that both clusters of students from the Advanced Academy and Intermediate Academy met. Being one of the tallest students there, Tang Wolin was positioned at the back. This gave him ample opportunity to observe the whole plaza, as well as all of the students within the academy. At the Intermediate Academy, there were around 100 students within each grade, totaling up to a rough figure of 7 to 800 students in all. Compared with the Intermediate Academy, the group at the Advanced Academy was significantly smaller as there were close to 200 students. Students in the Advanced Academy were divided into three grades. It was thus an arduous
intermediate students will enter the advanced academy in addition to our new students. As I see it, academies are like the blood of society. It receives individuals into the academy and later delivers them into society. In the near future, I hope all of you can. The president was very eloquent in his speech. In fact, he didn't even have a script to read off of. He spoke excellently for a full hour before he brought his speech to a close. The pinnacle of the opening ceremony proceeded right after the president's speech. Class assignment. Students who did not need a class assigned to them were slowly making their way out from the crowded plaza. Fresh faces from the advanced academy left towards their academy for their own class assignment. What was left within the plaza were the new students of the intermediate academy. We will proceed with the class assignment. It is known that within East the Academy, the smaller the class number, the more prestigious class. Though that is a fact, we too hope for exceptions where students from the last class will work harder and perform better. We have a total of 108 new students today, divided up into five classes. The students whom I will call up next are in class one. Tang Walin finally understood the implications of Long Henshu's words towards Xi Xi, Yun Xiao, and Zhou Zhangxi the day before, when they were sent to class five. There were a total of five classes, and students with more ability were positioned at the front. That said, class five was positioned right at the back. Tang Walin, Zhou Zhangxi, Xi Xi, Yun Xiao. As expected, the four names were finally called when the announcer arrived at the list for class five. There were 20 students within class five, and it was the smallest class of them all. Each and every one of them had a listless expression. Class teachers, please direct your students to their classes and help them familiarize themselves within the academy. Five teachers appeared before the crowd as the announcement ended. One of those five teachers headed towards the direction of class five. This teacher looked to be about 27 or 28 years old. When the students of class five turned to look at him, they were all stunned. This teacher was simply too handsome. Although Tang Walin and Shishi had exceptional looks, they were just kids. Thus, there was a possibility that they might change upon maturation. This teacher, however, stood at a staggering height of over 1.9 meters along with a pair of lanky arms and a thin waist. White trousers accentuated his long legs. Though he looked thin, the combination of that along with his brightly lit eyes, well-set nose, and thin lips gave off an image of height and intelligence. The massive hair was swept to the back of his head. A random current of wind poured on his lake blue tresses and rested them on his waistline, affirming the length of his hair. His pupils were of a smoky green and the color matched well with his blue hair, giving off a strange temperament. His face was expressionless, his gaze icy. One of the girls in class 5 breathed out quietly, the teacher is so handsome. Unknown to the girl, she had voiced out the thought of all the students. She, she twitched his lips at the comment, though his facial expression showed indifference. Come with me. This young teacher spoke simply, though the words were simple, it left a certain chill among the students, right within their hearts. This feeling, Yun Xiao whispered under his breath. The teacher seems powerful. He seemed to be someone powerful indeed. His mere appearance in the plaza had inflicted frostiness onto others to such a great effect. This would not be possible if he were an ordinary person. The classroom for class 5 was located at ground level, positioned at the innermost area of the building and required much more walking to reach. There were 30 sets of tables and chairs in the classroom. The teaching platform was positioned at the front of the classroom. Take your seats. The youthful teacher said coldly, every single time he spoke, he always gave off a feeling of iciness. Tang Walin picked a desk on the side after much consideration. His height would have obstructed the view of others if he sat in the middle of the current row, so he picked one on the side. This allowed him to be able to sit near the front and not obstruct his classmates. There were no bearings of what she had in mind. He simply picked a seat next to Tang Walin. Simultaneously, Yun Xiao and Zhou Tangxi dropped into the seats before and after him respectively. Thus, the four roommates were together again. The youthful teacher walked to the platform after entering the classroom. As he turned and scanned through the faces of the students before him, the chatter stopped and the classroom regained its silence. My name is Wu Zhang Kong. The youthful teacher introduced himself plainly. For the next six years, you will all be under my tutelage. I would like to emphasize a point. You may disregard whatever director Long Henshu had mentioned at the ceremony. Even if you are a bunch of trash, I will train you into the strongest students within your cohort. That is unless you choose to drop out. Otherwise, that shall be your aim for the next six years. While the words were full of arrogance, Wu Zhang Kong spoke with a plain tone and it still attracted the attention of all the students within the class. You shall introduce yourselves, your name, martial soul, soul power rank, and your aspirations. Tell me all of it. You may begin. It was clear and simple, nothing overboard. The area Tang Walin and his roommates that happened to be the side most row of the room Wu Zhang Kong happened to be pointing towards their direction. And so, Yun Xiao broke the ice and started his introduction. Hello everyone, my name is Yun Xiao. My martial soul is an astrolabe, and my soul power is at rank 12. My goal is to become an intelligence support type soul master. Of course, since Yun Xiao was given the nickname of Mastermind for his quick mindedness, it was simply fitting for that to be his aspiration. He started and ended his introduction in a dignified manner, though there was a hint of trembling in his voice. Tang Walin was next in line, and so he stood up. Wu Zhang Kong's gaze rested on him. It was then that he understood the tremor in Yun Xiao's voice. His gaze was sharp, to the point that it seemed to penetrate into a person's essence. Tang Walin, martial soul is blue silver brass, soul power is rank 11. My aspiration is. He halted when he was introducing his aspirations. I don't have one yet. That's a trash soul. No wonder you have no aspirations. A comment escaped from the massive student seated within the classroom. Sue. A piece chalk flew precisely into the mouth of said student, like a guided missile being aimed at its target. Oh. The chalk had some spiraling force as it went into the throat of the student. He started retching immediately. Wu Zhang Kong spoke ruthlessly. There are no trash martial soul in this world. Rather, there are only trash people. Consider your own morals first before calling others trash. If you want a piece of trash yourself, would you have landed in class 5? Chapter 46. Icily arrogant Prince Charming. Wu Zhang Kong's ice cold and powerful voice caused the whole class to quiet down in fear. Proceed. I, I am Joe Sangsi. My martial soul is the Titan Ape. Soul power at rank 11. My goal is to become a strength system battle soul master. She she. Martial soul is light dragon dagger. Soul power at rank 18. Agility system battle soul master. When the words rank 18 came out, the whole class was instantly shocked. A nine year old child with rank 18 soul power. This was truly a genius. Moreover, he was actually a battle soul master. After another two soul power ranks, he would become a soul grandmaster. Anyone capable of becoming a soul grandmaster before 12 years old was qualified to be called a genius. In the end, the highlight of the class was Shishi's soul power rank. In fact, Yun Xiao's rank 12 soul power was considered quite high as the majority of students ended with rank 11 soul power. As for their martial souls, there were all sorts of fantastic oddities, but none of them were particularly powerful. Of course, Tang Wuling's blue silver brass was still the worst of them all. This fact was practically said in stone. Starting tomorrow, classes will officially begin. My teaching style is a bit different from other teachers, so if you're afraid of pain, fatigue, or aches, quickly change schools or think of a way to change classes. Those who remain should mentally prepare themselves. That is all. Class dismissed. After Wu Zhang Kong's tall figure strode out from the classroom on his pair of long legs, the classroom exploded with chatter. Nearly all of them were discussing this cold, yet handsome teacher. Let's go then. You still need to fulfill your promise. She she looked towards Tang Wuling as he spoke. Although it was still morning, their classes had already ended. Classes wouldn't officially start for them until the next day. All right. Tang Wuling stood up and led the way out. As soon as Tang Wuling walked through the doorway, he found that the entire floor was filled with noisy upperclassmen. What are they doing? Huh? Tang Wuling. Right at that moment, a familiar voice called out. Tang Walin turned towards the voice, but its elegant owner had already arrived in front of him. It was the senior sister from the advanced academy who had greeted him yesterday, Wu Yushin. Senior sister. Tang Wal
Tang Wolin asked her, puzzled. Liu Yushun's pretty face blushed red. You guys wouldn't know this, but Wu Zhang Kong is the number one lady killer in our academy. With that coldness of his, regardless of whether it's the young female teachers or the female students, we all find him charming. He was a teacher at the advanced academy previously, but for some reason he was sent to the intermediate academy. Moreover, he was actually assigned to your class. We all feel that this is an injustice against him. However, the academy has already decided on it, so there isn't anything to be done about it. Even if we all miss him, help us take some pictures of him, and the senior sister definitely won't treat you unfairly. Tang Wolin stood there foolishly. He hadn't expected Liu Yushun would ask him to do this kind of thing. Senior sister, isn't this no good? Liu Yushun giggled. Don't worry about it. It's totally fine. If senior sister leaks some intel regarding teacher with you, it'll definitely be a benefit. Shishi was right behind Tang Wuling and was actually a bit impatient when he saw Tang Wuling talking with Liu Yushin. When he heard what she said, however, any desire to drag Tang Wuling away was dispelled. After hearing these circumstances, he gained an important understanding of the exotic flower that was their class's teacher. Liu Yushin said, Teacher Wu is our academy's most formidable teacher. Not only is he handsome and has an excellent build, but he's also knowledgeable and multi-talented. He's an excellent teacher as well. He has even cultivated to such a high level. Some say that he's the number one expert in our academy. I think I once saw him with at least six soul rings. That means he's at least a soul emperor. Soul emperor. This was simply too far off for Tang Wuling to imagine. With his current soul rank, it was practically impossible for him to cultivate to six soul rings as he didn't have the ability to purchase a powerful spirit soul. The number of spirit souls a human could absorb was limited to the what their spiritual power could bear. White spirit souls could only offer up one soul ring and currently, soul masters could only absorb up to three spirit souls. If they absorbed three white spirit souls, then three rings would be their limit. Yellow spirit souls could produce two soul skills at most, which was basically two soul rings. This was also the reason hundred year spirit souls were worth so much more. As for the high level purple colored thousand year spirit souls and black colored ten thousand year spirit souls, Tang Wuling didn't even dare to imagine obtaining one of them. Teacher Wu Zhang Kong actually had six rings. He was actually such a powerful person. East City only had a few six ring soul emperors, but more than that, he was actually so young. All right then. I'm going to head off first. Don't forget to take a few pictures for me. The item she had slipped into Tang Wuling's hands was actually a soul camera. Senior sister. Tang Wuling called out, but Liu Yushin had already run away. She was really fast and was actually chasing after teacher Wu Zhang Kong. You should give that camera to someone else for safekeeping first. You don't want to break it after all. Shishi coldly said. It's fine. Let's go. Tang Wuling said as he shot a glance towards Shishi. The benefits he obtained from meditation this previous day wasn't small. Unexpectedly, the area he improved most wasn't forging, but combat. That was the first time he had used his martial soul in a battle. In addition to the pressure Shishi exerted on him, he felt that the understanding he had for his martial soul had increased. This was the reason why he hadn't rejected today's battle. His master had said that his blue silver brass was a variant martial soul, so it wasn't purely trash anymore. After exiting the school, Tang Wuling asked Shishi, Where are we going? Shishi answered, We're going to Easty Park. There aren't many people there, so you can be at ease. I'll find someone to treat your injuries. Tang Wuling simply said, The facts will prove themselves. Chapter 47, The Battle of Easty Park. Easty Park wasn't far from Easty Academy. One could reach the park after a 10-minute stroll by following the path next to the exit of the academy. The park was accessible to the public at no charges at all. As it was still early in the day, the park was filled with many citizens doing their morning exercises. As one strolled into the park, their senses would be greeted with a rush of nature's perfume, a blend of the crisp scent of the plants and the floral sweetness from flowers, which refreshed their minds. Tang Wuling felt himself gradually relaxing. His blue silver grass was a plant marshal, soul, and he was currently surrounded by fields of blue silver grass. This was the environment he loved best. He had a faint thought that if he meditated here, the results would be much better than if he were to meditate back in the dorms. He had already proven this point when he was back home in Glorydown City, but it was impossible to compare the small garden back home to this park with its endless boundaries. The differences in size were simply incomparable. She, she wasn't surprised that he wasn't the first to arrive. He strolled casually and with much familiarity into the deepest parts of the park. Following the gravelled walkway into the park, one would realize the differences in the size of the trees. The deeper into the park, the larger they became. Easty Park had a history of over a thousand years, long before even the Easty Academy had been founded. With its rich history, the park contains many varieties of rare trees. As he moved deeper into the park, Tang Wuling gradually felt even better. This feeling of returning back to nature revitalized the martial soul within him. Such a good place. I will be back again. Tang Wuling thought, as they reached the deepest part of the park, where they were well hidden from others, Shi Shi halted in the center of an open area. Here it is. He turned to face Tang Wuling. Tang Wuling stopped at the same time, returning a cautious look to Shishi. I will be fair to you. Since I am an agility system battle soul master, I will move back 50 meters. When I say start, you may move. As he spoke, Shishi began moving backwards. He refused to take advantage of Tang Wuling, especially not with his pride held up so high. Tang Wuling didn't make a sound. Instead, his mind was filled with the images of their previous match. The yellow color of Shishi's martial soul when he released it during the match the other day was still vivid in his mind. Though he hadn't managed to grasp the spirit soul of Shishi's, it was clear to him that the color meant that Shishi had a hundred-year spirit soul. A hundred-year spirit soul would naturally have hundred-year soul skills. Tang Wuling was unsure about the strength of that power. Are you prepared? Shishi's voice came to him from afar. Tang Wuling took a deep breath and focused his gaze. Let's start. She she answered back coldly, I will show you the disparity between our skills. I will make you pay for the shame you have done to me. Start. As soon as he ended his words, he was flying towards Tang Wuling's direction like a released arrow. As she she prepared for his sprint, he had positioned himself low, giving others an image of him hugging the ground. A ring of yellow light appeared beneath his feet. Like the day before, Tang Wuling noticed that as he released this hundred year spirit soul, a 35 centimeter long blade that seemed to be made of crystal yellow appeared in his right hand. As she she sped forth, the accompanying dagger produced a faint dragon's growl. Tang Wuling also released his blue silver grass within a short span of time. A tiny, golden glowing grass snake appeared on his arm and twirled around his wrist. Strands of vine-like blue silver grass flew out. While Tang Wuling had little to no practical experience, the blue silver grass thrived with its ability to cover a wide range of space. As these little blades of grass expanded, its surface area increased rapidly and enveloped she she easily, still using the same trick. A trace of disdain flashed across Shishi's face. He increased his speed swiftly. Shishi, who was previously charging in a straight line towards him, shifted into an illusion. At once, Tang Wuling lost sight of Shishi and his ability to pinpoint his exact location due to the dizzying blur before him. Shishi moved through the gaps of Tang Wuling's weaving a variant blue silver grass unscathed and shortened his distance with Tang Wuling. This is bad. If Bind fails to trap my opponent, then this variant blue silver grass is no longer useful in battle. Tang Wuling thought this as he retracted the grass vines and directed them before himself. The denser these vines were, the higher the defense capabilities they would have. It was an idea that came to him during his meditation the night before. At this time, Shishi was already within a 10 meter range from Tang Wuling. Shishi's speed didn't change. Instead, his arm moved even quicker. The light dragon dagger in his hand morphed into a bursting ball of light which released endless golden rays that were aimed precisely at the blue silver grass beneath him. It was then that Tang Wuling realized the immense difference between Shishi and himself. Every blade of his blue silver grass had been slashed apart by the light that came from Shishi's light dragon dagger. Although the blades of grass were still intact, they could easily
light explosive sound. With a sharp, flashlight turn, he was already at Tang Wuling's side. At this point in time, Tang Wuling was caught defenseless. If this was a battlefield, and Shishi had the intention to kill, he could have laid his blade easily on Tang Wuling's neck. However, Shishi took an abrupt pause. He only had the thought of defeating Tang Wuling in mind, and didn't have any other intention. He changed the direction of his dagger, twitching the blade at its handle, and locked on his target, Tang Wuling's cheek. I will pay you back for the swelling that you did to my face. While many decisions were being made within Shishi's mind during this split second, Tang Wuling suddenly jerked and tilted his head down, using the back of his skull to knock against Shishi's handle during this fraction of time. However, Shishi's response was quick. What made a person an agility system martial soul master? At its highest realm of mastery, the master would be able to avoid direct combat for as long as they wished. When the opponent was finally selected, they would have already been left defenseless. Though Shishi was proud, his analysis of Tang Wuling wasn't influenced by that pride and was accurate. He knew clearly that Tang Wuling's strength wasn't something that he could withstand. He twisted his agile wrist in a split second and sank the light dragon dagger into Tang Wuling's shoulder blade. Chapter 48 Golden Scales The light dragon dagger pierced into his shoulder. Shishi restrained himself in this attack as he thought that Tang Wuling's whole arm would have been severed if he'd used his entire strength. Neither of them had a deep hatred for the other, so giving him a small lesson would be enough. However, what shocked him was that Tang Wuling's shoulder flesh was extremely tough. Even his light dragon dagger was only able to cut about an inch. Even if he had restrained his strength, this result was simply too shocking. Bright red blood appeared, accompanied by pain. This caused Tang Wuling to lose control of the withdrawing blue silver grass, leaving the grass limp on the ground. As the light dragon dagger pushed down, Tang Wuling was forced to his knees. After stumbling a bit, he was able to stand back up. He wanted to punch Shishi, but Shishi suddenly spun and was already at his rear. The light dragon dagger in his shoulder twisted, causing a burst of pain to shoot throughout his body. In particular, the spot where the light dragon dagger had stabbed him had an energy which oppressed his soul power. Admit defeat. Shishi's voice was proud after having avenged his defeat against Tang Wuling's fist the previous day. Tang Wuling clenched his teeth. His stubborn heart couldn't possibly allow him to concede at this point. Right at that moment, the pain in his shoulder seemed to ignite through his whole body. A scorching wave of heat rushed forth, spreading rapidly throughout his being. He wanted to speak out, but found that he wasn't able to speak at all. I ask you, do you admit defeat? Shishi pressed down on the dagger in his hand as he fiercely said this. No. Tang Wuling snarled with a hint of rebellion. Shishi was stunned for a moment. He wondered why Tang Wuling's voice was so hoarse, even when the wound was so shallow. Subconsciously, even he wanted to pull out the light dragon dagger. At that moment, however, an unexpected situation occurred. The light dragon dagger that was stabbed into his shoulder issued out an e-piercing dragon's roar that filled Shishi's entire being with palpitation. He felt as if he had suddenly encountered something dreadful. The blood suddenly stopped flowing from the location where the light dragon dagger was embedded and a golden light began to spill out of the wound. Bathed in that golden light, the light dragon dagger slid a bit out of the wound. Faced with this unknown situation, Shishi's first thought was to retreat. However, he was aghast to discover that the light dragon dagger was practically clinging onto Tang Wuling, and he couldn't retrieve the light dragon dagger at all. Ah. Uh. Tang Wuling let out a shocking roar as a golden light poured out of his wound, dislodging the light dragon dagger. As Shishi watched, a golden mass of light suddenly rushed towards him. Then he felt as if he was flying, as though he had been hit by a high-speed soul train. He immediately blacked out, completely unaware of what happened. Bang! Shishi crashed into a large tree off in the distance and slowly slid down its trunk. Tang Wuling half knelt on the ground. His eyes were just as red as before, while his whole body violently trembled. Right at this moment, he felt as though he were metal being calcined in a furnace. The blazing heat within his body made him shake unceasingly. However, he was still completely conscious. When he had punched Shishi moments ago, he had restrained his strength at the very last moment. Otherwise, he feared that Shishi would have died. He lowered his head and was shocked to see his right hand covered in scales. These were golden scales shaped like rhombuses. Each scale protruded outwards a bit, giving it a sharp look. His fingernails had a sharp scale that narrowed to a point, similar to sharp talons. The little brass snake, gold light, who'd been twisting around his arm, had also releasing a faint golden light. Moreover, its whole body had actually lengthened by a whole circle while its two small eyes had turned red, similar to a pair of twinkling rubies. Was it the reason? Was it not a trash spirit soul? What was the cause of all this? Tang Wuling quickly took off his shirt and was dumbstruck when he saw that the change wasn't only around his palms. Rather, the scales covered his entire right arm. Starting from where the light dragon dagger had stabbed him, the golden scales spread all the way to his palms. His arm had an indescribable feeling of power within it. Subconsciously, he suddenly punched out with his right arm. Boom! When he punched the air with his right arm, a golden ball of light rushed forth and gave an indistinct shape of a dragon's head as it traveled a meter out in front of him. The powerful aura from his all-out punch confirmed his suspicions as to the effect it would have had on a human body. Gold light, is this power because of you? Tang Wuling asked the little brass snake wrapped around his wrist, pleasantly surprised. Right at that moment, however, the inflated body of the little brass snake began to gradually shrink back to its original size, while the golden scales on his arm also began to rapidly vanish. Several breaths of time later, everything was back to normal. The only thing that remained was a feeling of exhaustion. Tang Wuling's vision faded to darkness, then he lost consciousness. He hadn't put on his clothes yet, so when the golden veins appeared on his body once again, they were visible for anyone to see. In particular, the shining lines on his vertebrae were especially bright. Shishi woke up with a jolt. He was still dazed, but noticed a vague change in scenery. When he raised his head to look around, he saw a familiar scene. The moment he looked up, he saw the gates of East Academy. The sky had already turned dark, so the lit words of East Academy were exceptionally clear. Wally Wulu. Shishi wanted to speak out, but he discovered that all the sounds he made were completely incomprehensible. Tang Tang Wuling's brows wrinkled and asked Shishi, who he carried on his back. What did you say? Wu what? Shishi's words were still as unclear as before. As he gradually became more clear-headed, Shishi discovered that he was being carried on Tang Wuling's back. He subconsciously raised his hand to touch his face, finding it swollen up like bread. His whole face was already thick with numbness. Like a surging tide, he gradually recalled the events from before. Shishi's mind echoed with the words he had said before he and Tang Wuling had left Eastie Academy. We're going to Eastie Park. There aren't many people there, so you can be at ease. I'll find someone to treat your injuries. But now... He had spent 24,000 coins just for a beating. Chapter 49. Unable to find the golden scales, Shishi was full of grief and indignation. If this were the first time he had lost, then he would think that he had lost due to his carelessness. However, this was the second time he had lost. Moreover, he had lost in such a manner that he wasn't able to make heads or tails of what had happened. He touched Tang Wuling's shoulder, feeling for the area where he had stabbed him. Yet, he couldn't find it at all. He has a secret. This guy definitely has a secret. What was that golden light? Shishi calmed himself and clearly asked. Gold light? Gold light is my spirit soul. Tang Wuling's hand flashed with a brilliant light. Then the yellow brass snake, gold light, appeared in his palm. I'm talking about the golden light that came from your body. Shishi angrily said, not only had this guy insulted him, he had also insulted his intelligence. This could not be tolerated. Tang Wuling forced out a bit of laugh. Even if I wanted to tell you, I don't know what that was. Do you understand? Shishi gave a cold snort, expressing his attitude towards Tang Wuling. Yan Xiao and Zhou Tangxi were dumbstruck when they saw Tang Wuling carry Shishi in and lay him on the bed. Zhou Tangxi directly asked, you wanted to beat him up, yet you actually ended up getting carried back. Shishi's sw
It's fine if you eat as much as you want. The Academy's third window is free and unlimited. It's just a question of how much more can you eat. Tang Wolin rubbed his stomach. He hadn't eaten lunch, so he was especially hungry this night. I should still be able to eat a lot more. The cook said, It's good that you came so late then. The second window still has some leftovers. Nobody is going to buy it, so I'll just give it to you then. Otherwise, the food would go to waste. Half a pot of stewed meat was added to a pot of noodles, then given to Tang Wolin. Tang Wolin couldn't wait to eat it. He quickly thanked the cook and began gorging himself. The unknown meat in the stew from the second window was exceptionally chewy, with an ordinary flavor, but his stomach felt nice and warm after he finished eating. He had used up a lot of strength today, but with this meal, some of his strength had been restored. So the second window is actually so good. I wonder how the first window is. Tang Wolin swallowed his saliva as he shot a glance at the first window. However, he quickly regained himself and shook his head. The first window's food wasn't something he could eat. After he acquired some work from the Blacksmiths Association in the future, he'd see if he could earn some more money. It was just that. He had to save some money in order to buy another spirit soul in the future too. One million federal coins could buy a yellow hundred-year spirit soul. That was his goal. After earning ten thousand coins at the Blacksmiths Association, Tang Wolin had set his sights on a hundred-year spirit soul. Shishi wasn't there when he returned to his dorm room, but Tang Wolin didn't care too much about him. Although that guy was arrogant and unbridled, he wasn't excessively so. Shishi's final attack on him that day was made with the dagger's handle, clearly showing his restraint. Although Yun Xiao was already meditating, Zhou Sangsi hadn't begun yet. When he saw Tang Wolin return, he immediately raised his head from his bed and asked, Tang Wolin, is Shishi really a rank 18 soul master? How did you beat him? Zhou Sangsi was getting more and more curious about Tang Wolin, who was even more powerful than him. Tang Wolin had an expression of helplessness. Actually, I don't know either. He really didn't know. How could he possibly say that golden scales appeared on his arm? After fainting and waking up, his body had already returned to normal and no matter what he did, he couldn't get those scales to reappear. He only vaguely remembered that there was a surge of heat within his body before the scales appeared on his arm, filling it with berserk power. His consciousness had been somewhat fuzzy at the time, and he hadn't been able to contain the feeling in his body. A tyrannical mood had even come over him at that time. If his willpower hadn't been so resolute, he was afraid that he'd have put others in danger. But in the end, what were those golden scales? Could they actually be due to his variant martial soul? Or could it be his little brass snake? Gold light wasn't actually a trash spirit soul, but was actually an impossible existence. However, no matter how he looked at it, he couldn't see gold light being so valiant. The bottom of the matter was this: what caused those golden scales to appear? Would they only appear when he was harmed? Tang took out a sewing needle from his personal items and pricked himself. How painful. A drop of blood flowed out, accompanied by an intense stinging feeling, but still nothing. The golden scales didn't appear. He was a bit afraid of pain, so could it be that this prick was too little? He tried it again. But still nothing. It still was to no avail. I'll try meditating then. Completely focused on meditating, Tang Wolin began circulating his soul power while in search of the bazaar heat. He had only learned the most basic of meditation techniques, so the path of his soul power was exceedingly simple. Soon after, he finished circulating his soul power, but still wasn't able to find anything at all. Everything was the same as always. There were absolutely no deviations in his cultivation. This was truly strange. Tang Wolin summoned gold light and inspected it. However, no matter how much he looked it over, the undulating energy coming from this guy wouldn't be able to give him such such tyrannical strength. Early morning. When Tang Wolin finished his meditation, he looked across the room and saw that Shishi was also meditating. He had returned at an unknown time and the swelling of his face had gone down by a lot. Only his complexion was just as bad as before. Tang Wolin didn't know whether it was because Shishi had been beaten again, or because he was angry. No one would be happy after paying for a beating. Chapter 50, The First Class, Let's Battle Again. Shishi repeated for the umpteenth time as he rushed to catch up with Tang Wolin. Tang Wolin ignored Shishi's calls and headed straight for the dining hall. I wasn't at my best yesterday. If you don't fight with me, don't think that I won't reveal your secrets. Shishi threatened. You can say whatever you want. Tang Wolin replied to his threat nonchalantly. What was he to be afraid of? If he himself knew nothing about the golden scales, you don't disturb my meal time. Tang Wolin told Shishi as if he was showing a fly, and easily moved him aside as he headed for the third window. Hey. Come fight me. I'll treat you to a meal from the first window. An idea took form in Shishi's mind as he shouted towards Tang Wolin's back. Tang Wolin, who was originally headed towards the third window, suddenly returned to Shishi's side, as if his back was attached to a rope and it had been yanked backwards. Are you serious? He still had cravings for the meals from the first window. After having tasted the food from the second window the day before, he could feel the significant difference the nutritious food had made to his body. He had felt distinctly more comfortable when he woke up this morning. He had been able to feel it throughout his whole body, as if each and every inch of his muscles had been revitalized. Of course. Shishi answered back proudly. Until I've had enough. Tang Wolin's pair of large eyes brightened up. As much as you can eat. Didn't they say that you have a huge appetite? Show me your ability. I'll let you eat until you can't take any more food. Shishi's lips curled into a smile as he spoke. Deal. Half an hour later, Shishi was already beginning to regret his promise. Are you even human? You've already eaten 30 phoenix turtle eggs, and you still have room for more. A meal from the second window costs 300 federation coins, and a meal from the first window could cost up to 1,000 federation coins. Tang Wolin wasn't aware of these costs, and had already finished at least 15 meals, but it seems that he hadn't filled up just yet. Let's just forget about this, then. I'll stop eating. Tang Wolin felt a little ashamed. He had no idea how much one meal course would cost, but with the quantity that he had consumed, it was definitely not cheap. Seeing that Tang Wolin was moving towards the third window, Shishi rushed forward to grab him and answered fiercely, Hey, why did you stop? You've already insulted my body. I am not going to let you insult my character as well. I'll keep my word. A meal from the first window gave Tang Wolin an astoundingly different feeling. He had never tasted anything as delicious as this. The meal from the second window, though nutritious, was bland. However, this meal from the first window was utterly different, even when putting its incredible taste aside. As Tang Wolin consumed the food, it warmed up his whole stomach and filled him with an inexpressibly comfortable feeling. The warmth from the food flowed into all his limbs and bones, heat radiating off Tang Wolin's body. It felt as though there was a wave of energy gently vibrating within him. Tang Wolin finally stopped at his 22nd meal, satiated. Thank you. Shishi rolled his eyes. What? Are you full? Tang Wolin smiled. I've forgotten that your name's Shishi Wan. I was thanking you. After understanding what Tang Wolin meant, Shishi coolly replied, Remember your promise to me. Though he was wealthy, Shishi only had so much pocket money, and the total price of Tang Wolin's servings made him cringe a little. The sum for the repairs of the previous day amounted to around 20,000 coins. On top of the 20,000 today, totaled to approximately 40,000 coins. Worst of all, he wasn't sure if he buying another beating or not. Today, Wu Zhangkong was wearing a pair of pants colored in gray, black and white, along with a white shirt. His attire's style was simple, but it accentuated his tall and slim figure. By simply standing, his body emitted blasts of cold air, silencing the class effectively. Tang Wolin wore the most satisfied expression, actually looking relaxed, with his tummy full of goodness from the first window. How could he not be? The gushes of warmth were slowly stirring up the soul power inside him. It was true, then, that good and nutritious food could promote a body's quality and could shorten one's cultivation speed. Today officially marks the start of your classes. Most of your lessons will be taught by me. Stand up. Wu Zhangkong spoke with a cold attitude. The whole class quickly jumped to their feet. Come with me.
Contrary to experiencing the anxiety that most students felt, Zhou Sangsi became excited almost instantaneously. He couldn't accept having been punched out the window by Tang Wulin, but after witnessing Tang Wulin defeat Shishi after only two strikes, his urge to fight had been quelled when the director gave the order to stop fighting. That's good. Let's compete with our strength. I don't believe your strength will be greater than mine. Zhou Sangsi's eyes lit up as he directed his words at Tang Wulin. Tang Wulin remained silent. Wu Zhangkong commanded the students to form a circle around the competing duo. You may begin. No rules as to how you may defeat your opponent. Wu Zhangkong pointed out plainly, but his words were directed towards the entire student body as well. Zhou Sangsi roared loudly, wide-eyed. His soul ring appeared as a white circle beneath his feet. The ray of light instantly flowing upwards, following the contour of his body. In the same moment, his massive build grew in size, particularly the muscles in both his arms, which were visibly swelling up beneath his full uniform. A little brown monkey appeared on his shoulder. It seemed to be a spirit soul, a ten-year spirit soul. First soul skill, power amplification. Zhou Sangsi took big strides in Tang Wuling's direction, producing a thundering dong dong sound when he stopped on both of his feet. As a match to his massive build, there was his aggressive vigor. A few long strides took him to Tang Wuling's side. With both his hands stretched in Tang Wuling's direction, he aimed at both Tang Wuling's shoulders at once. Tang Wuling shot out both his fists at the same time, aiming towards both Zhou Sangsi's hands. Peng. Ding, ding, ding. The massively built Zhou Sangsi was forced backwards three steps before he managed to regain his balance. With a big step forward, Tang Wuling threw a punch in Zhou Sangsi's direction. To counter Tang Wuling's punch, Zhou Sangsi gritted his teeth and forced out all the strength within his body into the punch directed at Tang Wuling. Thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Also, leave a comment down below with suggestions on what novels to read.